Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad, and today I'm gonna give you 36 incredible hidden details from Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. This is part 2 of a 3 parts video. In part 1, I've covered the first 45 minutes of the movie, and in this video I'm gonna cover the next 45. And with part 3, I'm gonna conclude the series next week. If you haven't watched part 1 yet, no worries, I'm making these videos in a way where you don't have to follow any particular order. But before we get into finding some awesome details, I'd like to share some awesome deals I've found thanks to today's sponsor, Timu. Timu is an online marketplace that offers affordable prices, amazing coupons for extra saving, and an insane variety of products. Plus, they offer free shipping and free returns for up to 90 days. Right now, Timu is having a semi-annual sale with savings of up to 90% off. And they're offering my viewers several coupons that add up to $100 for free through my link in description. Here's a special offer for you lads. If you want to buy a Nintendo Switch, which is priced at $355, but for my viewers, it's $299. And with the coupon, it comes down to $254. That's more than $100 in savings compared to other online retailers. And in honor of today's Spider-Man video, here are a few other items you might be interested in checking out. For example, this MCU version of Spider-Man's collectible set, or stay stylish in the Spider-Man necklace, or get the spider sticker for your car. So if you want to check out any of the items I mentioned, download the Timu app through my link in description, and don't forget to use my code to get a $100 coupon for free. Thanks Timu for sponsoring today's video. Let's begin our second breakdown of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Number 1, after Miles is grounded for two months by his father Jeff, Miles comes back to his room all frustrated. And there we see a book on his bedside table that says The Fire Next Time by James Baldwin. Now this is a very relevant hidden detail, because in this book, the writer Baldwin writes a short letter to his 14-year-old nephew James, just like Uncle Aaron who's a mentor to Miles Morales. Not only that, this book also talks about races and racism in the United States. Number 2. The first time Gwen and Miles meet in this movie, Gwen asks Miles to go out and they both swing through the city. Now there underneath this bridge, notice the way the sun reflects on Miles' back. It's a silhouette in the shape of a giant heart, indicating just how much Miles is in love with Gwen. Number 3. The apartment where the spot used to live in is now available for renting. But notice this number on the billboard. It says 1917 1610 616. Now 1610 is a designation for Miles' universe and 616 is of course the main primary timeline. Number 4. Inside the Spot's apartment, Gwen Stacy scans the whole room for clues as to what the Spot's been up to and where he might be. And there we notice that the Spot, aka Dr. Jonathan Owen, has received multiple awards for his work at Alchemix. For example, this one says Breakthrough of the Year. And if I zoom in, notice it is also signed by Dr. Octavius, the CEO of Alchemix, and Wilson Fisk, the founder of the company. Number 5. In this shot, where we see a photo of Dr. Jonathan Owen with Dr. Octavius, notice in the background, we can see that Dr. Jonathan used to have level 4 security pass at Alchemix, which explains why he was there in the collider room in the first movie when Miles Morales blew it up. Number 6. The first time Miles enters into Spider-Man India's universe, aka Mumbatan, notice there's a guy on a horse, and people around him are dancing. Now if you know the Indian culture, you'll know that this is a groom on his way to his wedding to meet his bride. I love the fact that this scene takes place for only about 2 seconds, and yet the animators made sure to portray as much of Indian culture as possible. Number 7. From here on, Miles gets tangled up in a piece of cloth called dupatta in Hindi, which is basically a thin scarf that Indian women use. And if you notice the fabric of the scarf, the animators added this extra textures or details as a nod to the rich Indian fashion style. Number 8. When Miles was glitching in Mumbatan and bumped his head onto something, notice the action word is now in Hindi instead of English. And it says tar, as in a sound effect if you hit something. Number 9. At one point, the spot talks to a few locals who are riding a scooter. Now it is illegal in India as well to ride a scooter with more than two passengers. But here there's a total of four, which is also common in India, as it allows you to drive past heavy traffic during emergencies. Number 10. In the scene where Miles saves Gwen in Mumbatan, there's a billboard that says Hershey's, along with a few chocolate samples, indicating this is the Indian version of Hershey's in this universe. Now Hersh is a common name in India. And there's also another billboard right next to it that says Pani, which is incomplete for Pani Puri. And Pani Puri is a very popular Indian street food. And I'm proud to say I'm one of the lucky ones who had it in Canada as well. Number 11. Now just like this universe has their version of Hershey's, notice they also have their very own Joe's Paratha. Whereas the US counterpart says Joe's Pizza. Now Paratha is another form of cooked bread like none. 
Number 12. Cars in Spider-Man India's universe also have action words beside them. For example, if I translate the Hindi words you see on screen, it would appear something like this in English. Now these words obviously don't mean anything, but I think the reason the animators did this is to convey that these cars are honking. And people in India do honk their cars more often, as it has a different meaning there. Because pedestrians sometimes step on the main roads, causing extra traffic. So people driving cars have no other options but to honk. And also, cars in India do go very close to each other. So honking is another way of warning the other driver around you. Man, I love Indian culture. It may be loud, but there's love all over. Now thanks to my friend from India who has helped me figure out all these hidden details. Make sure to follow him on Twitter and join his Spider-Man Discord server. Number 13. In Pavita Prabhakar's intro, we see two thugs in a motorcycle trying to escape from a crime scene by shooting their way out. Here the action word says Disham, which is like a blast or loud sound effect. And over here, where Pavita webs them up and stops them, the action word says Nahi, which means no in Hindi. Number 14. In the same intro, Pavita shows us how he fought some of the same villains like his other Spidey counterparts. And this is probably Nalin Oberoi from the comics, a multiversal counterpart of Norman Osborn. And he also has a son named Harry Oberoi instead of Harry Osborn. Number 15. When Pavita tells Miles that he doesn't apply anything to his hair, Miles doesn't buy it. And that's when Pavita admits that yes, he does apply coconut oil every now and then. Now guess what? There are coconut oil advertisements all over the city, meaning the animators have put billboards that stay relevant with the story. Number 16. In the scene where we see Pavita Prabhakar attending school, notice there's a poster of the great Mahatma Gandhi. Now Gandhi is known for his philosophy of non-violence that has inspired civil rights leaders around the world. And notice Pavita's body is way bigger than all of his classmates, indicating that the spider that bit him did give him enhanced muscles just like it happened with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. Number 17. When Pavita is having a romantic moment with his girlfriend Gayatri, there his spidey sense warns him that Gayatri's father is behind them. So they both turn around with their books in their hands. But one thing that I noticed here after multiple rewatches of this film is that Gayatri never tries to grab any book. It was Pavita who grabbed two books, gave one to Gayatri, and held onto one for himself. That's how fast Spider-Man India is. And this is the first visual representation of that without any battle. Number 18. At the beginning, we've seen how Miles takes a hot dog from a vendor, but he eventually ends up paying him. But notice when it comes to Spider-Man India, not only does he not have to pay, but the vendor holds his hand up high so that Spider-Man India can grab the food while swinging. And after he takes it, the vendor even waves his hand at him. This immediately tells you how well received Spider-Man India is in his universe. Everyone here is in love with him because of his charisma and charm. Number 19. Spider-Man India is the only Spider-Man who uses his feet and legs during swinging or even in the middle of a combat. This is because the animators have modeled Pavita's style after an ancient South Indian form of martial arts, originating from the state of Kerala, called Kalari Payatu. Number 20. When Miles was fighting the spot in Mumbatan, Miles collided with his giant billboard. Now the advertisement on this billboard is actually of a real-life food delivery company by the name Zomato. But the hidden detail is not that. The detail is this. Notice this female model on the ad. That's right, it is actually Gayatri, the girlfriend of Pavita Prabhakar. They both had the same hairstyle, same earring on the right ear, and of course the same choker on the neck. So yes, it is indeed Gayatri in the billboard, which means she might be a part-time model as well. Number 21. When Pavitar calls out the spot for coming to India for self-improvement as that's a western culture cliche, notice we can see a billboard behind Pavitar. It says Sacred Wars. Now this could be the multiversal counterpart of Secret Wars, which will officially conclude this whole multiverse saga. Number 22. In Pavitar's intro, we see this shot where he's jumping off somewhere, implying Pavitar also had a similar character arc like Miles where they both had to take a leap of faith. Number 23. Now let me tell you each and every single detail about Spider-Man India's suit. First and foremost, most his weapon. This particular thing is called Damaru, which is an object used by Lord Shiva in Hinduism. And that is also why Pavita has this tilak or tikka between his eyes, which represents purity and a connection to God. And I absolutely love how Pavita transforms this weapon and wears it like a bracelet. And he also plays with it like a yo-yo. Then comes his face mask. Notice it replicates traditional face paintings practiced by Indians during festivals. Pavita also has similar paintings on his shoulders. For example, this is called Rangoli. And this light symbol that we see in the center is called Dia or Deepak. Now Rangolis and Dias are often used in Diwali which is a festival of lights in India. Then comes his spider symbol on the center of his suit. This is also made with Rangoli. Now Pavita also has Mandy or Henna on his hands. And the last detail is what Pavita wears is called a 
Toti, which he has in the comics as well. Now, Totis are an attire worn by Indian men during festivals or special events. Now, what's incredible about all these details is that none of these traditions or cultures are from one part of India. The animators took inspiration from all over India. And if you know anything about India, you will know that India is one of the richest countries in terms of culture and traditions. So hats off to the team who pulled it off incredibly. Number 24. When Spider-Punk and Spider-Man India meet for the first time in the film, although they've met before according to the story, they do this handshake thing. Now Phil Lord, the writer of this movie, has confirmed it is a nod to LeBron James and Dwayne Wade's handshake. Number 25. When the Spot is about to escape through the multiversal portal, Miles stops him by webbing his back. And in a united display of teamwork, Gwen, Pavetta, and Spider-Punk stand behind Miles, interconnected by their web lines, forming a supportive chain. But then the Spot cuts the webbing by opening a portal in between, and the sudden release propelled all of them to fall backward. But notice what happens here. Even though all of them fall backward at the same speed, but it's only Gwen who stands up straight and is the fastest to do so. Or in simple words, she's the first one to get back up. It is because Gwen is a ballet dancer, as revealed in Into the Spider-Verse. And that is why out of all the Spider-People, Gwen is the only one with superior balance and the ability to recover swiftly. Number 26. The spot throughout the movie just kept getting better at using his powers. For example, at one point, he was able to grab Miles from inside a portal. Miles was nowhere to be seen, but Spot could still spot him, and then he just grabbed Miles out of thin air. Meaning, as the movie kept going forward, the Spot was also getting better at utilizing his powers. Number 27. Despite having met just moments ago, Miles and Pavetta showcase remarkable teamwork. For example, here Miles evacuates numerous civilians from a collapsing building, tossing them to safety. In response, Pavetta intervenes and wraps all the civilians with his web. However, a question arises, how can Pavetta remain suspended in mid-air without attaching his web to a structure? This is where Miles comes into play, reaching out and firmly gripping Pavetta's hand, allowing him to land the civilians safely. Now that's what I call great teamwork. Number 28. Inside the Spider Society, we see about 280 Spider-Man characters, but most of them are just random designs the animators came up with. The significant ones do get their intros like this, and in my trailer breakdowns, I pointed out each and every single of the Spider People, so for this video, I won't waste your time repeating it again. However, there are a few new Spider-Man variants here that I'd quickly like to mention. We see Spider-UK, Peter Parked Car, Spider-Cat, Margot Cass, and Spider-Rex. Number 29. When Miles meets Margot Cass for the first time, Miles actually gets impressed by her. So much so that Gwen starts feeling jealous of this newly found friendship between Miles and Margot. For example, in this scene, despite bidding farewell, Miles was still lingering his gaze towards Margot. Seeing this, Gwen gets jealous and webs up Miles to pull him away from her. Number 30. Aaron Baker, one of the great animators who has worked on this film, has revealed a very interesting detail on Twitter. He wrote, and I quote, On Spider-Verse, we were encouraged to create crowd versions of ourselves to help with diversity in the city. Here I am, had to add the backward beige cap. Now thanks to Aaron Baker, we now have the knowledge that numerous background characters in this film were actually inspired by real-life individuals who contributed to its creation. By the way, lads, the image shared by Mr. Baker on Twitter is actually a screenshot taken from my video specifically specifically Breakdown Part 1. Oh man, it makes me so happy knowing that talented individuals like Aaron Baker, who played a significant role in crafting this movie, watch my videos. 31. Lila, Miguel O'Hara's assistant, shows Miles the Spider-Man characters who wound up in the wrong dimensions. And there we see a bunch of Doc Ox, a Mysterio, a Mysterio, and two video game characters. Now notice this video game character is our favorite Spider-Man from the Insomnia PS4 game. Yuri Lowenthal, who voices the character in the game, did the voice over here as well. Then we see a Quaven the Hunter variant, a Rhino, and of course the live-action Prowler. Now this is probably Prowler from the main universe, aka MCU 616 or Earth 19999. But because this video is only about hidden details, so I'm not gonna talk about my theories about this character just yet. 32. The first time we see Miguel O'Hara in his HQ, Miguel was watching footage from all over the multiverse. For instance, this screen shows the exact moment the spot traveled to the Legoverse. On the bottom right, we see footage of Gwen, and here we see Spider UK and Jessica Drew. And if you notice, this is the same shot of Spider UK and Jessica Drew that we've seen previously but from a different angle. Another screen then shows footage of Miles' father, Jefferson. And this is before we learn about canon events, meaning Miguel was already keeping an eye on Miles' father even before he told Miles that Jeff is gonna die. 33. Peter B. Parker is wearing slippers that says, Cool Dad. 
Number 34. When Miguel O'Hara explains canon events to Miles, he shows us the Tree of the Multiverse, which looks exactly like the sacred timeline shown in Loki Season 1, Episode 6. And yes, it was an intentional move from the animation team to connect this movie to the MCU. But these are not hidden details. The fact that we've seen Toby or Andrew are not hidden. So let me give you one detail here that you haven't noticed before. Miguel says that there were some common chapters in every Spider-Man's life that are either good, bad, or very bad. Now notice when he mentions the bad chapters, Miguel is looking at this particular canon event where three different Eddie Brocks and three different Peter Parkers are getting possessed by the Venom symbiote. This implies that Miguel considers the creation of Venom as an essential part of the Spider-Man canon. That means we can no longer blame any Peter Parker for succumbing to the powers of Venom, as it is now acknowledged as a significant and unavoidable event within their collective stories. 35. Miguel then mentions Event ASM 90, aka Amazing Spider-Man number 90, where Captain Stacy dies while saving a kid. The Notice the animators have replicated the exact image from the comic panels. Number 36. When Miguel explains how he was the first one to break a canon event, the animators visually show us how it happened. There we see his daughter along with all living beings glitch out of existence. Now many believe that Miguel only sought Peter B. Parker's assistance in saving their universe. But if you notice very carefully, Miguel brought a lot of other spider people as well to help him prevent the widespread glitching. Meaning a lot of Spider-Man variants possess first-hand knowledge of what could happen if a canon event is disrupted. And that's why they're so loyal to Miguel O'Hara, which enabled him to form the Spider Society in the first place, because they're not just trusting his words blindly. They have seen the disruptive repercussions that can arise from tampering with canon events. And that's it. This would be my part 2 breakdown of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Coming up next is part 3 where the hidden details I found are absolutely bonkers. But yes, please give me a week before I put that video out, as I plan on going to the theaters two more times to find more hidden details for part 3. In the meantime, if there's a hidden detail or an easter egg you'd like me to know, please comment down below as you know I read every single comment. Now if you like this video then please give me a thumbs up, grab the subscribe button and turn notifications on. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to get updates about my videos. Till then I'll see you lads in the next one.